Hello, I'm Paul Feldrip and I'm very happy to be here at Hack Closure 2020 and talk to you. I will talk about Modo Check and Closure. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizers. You are fantastic. You are awesome. And let's go. I am a software engineer contractor at Cravey, uh, a healthcare startup in USA. I am Pitoko's dad and Flavia husband. I am from Recife, but I'm living now in Sao Paulo. And let's move on. I would divide the, the talk in four parts. First, we will see what's model checking, why it is important, a little introduction, a fast and quick introduction. Then we'll go over a live demo. I hope everything works way, uh, correctly. Then we'll go over Recife. It's the name of the library that I gave, right? The same name of the city. Then we go over the future of the Recife, of the library, of uh, improvements, limitations. And there are a lot of things to improve. Oh man. So first a disclaimer, I'm not an expert, I'm not a researcher, I am just a soft engineer, right? I'm trying to do this from a practical standpoint so more people in the industry have the opportunity to 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 use a tool like modo checking and let's go. So let's go to a formal definition of modo checking. Um, given a finite state model of a system and a formal property, its systemic checks where it is property hold for uh, that model in a given state, right? So, in other words, it's just asking if something is correct, but it's not the same type of, of correctness, uh, the uh, correctness assertions about the system that we do in day-to-day -day automated testing, in unity testing or integration testing, in property-based testing, uh, in this day-to-day -day automated tests that we are used to, we are bothered by implementation details, right? Um, there are things that simply cannot be tested or they are too difficult, take a, lo a very long time. And here you focus to, to test a high level of abstraction that is the system design itself, right? We want to know if I have two components, uh, or for example, component A and component B, and if I change something component B, will it break something in the in a, some some environment in component A? Or if I have two process running, can any state uh, take it to a deadlock? To a race condition, so we we will do it with the help of formal specifications, right? Uh, with formal specification, we can write formal specification from uh, from informal requirements, from our history, from our dogs, talk to our managers, right? And we are doing closure, but uh, there are already uh, multiple language, uh, multiple. Um, frameworks to do model checking or, or where you can test the, uh, the invariants of a system, of a design. And TLA Plus, Alloy, Spin are some of the examples of it. Uh, they are widely used by the academic people and also used in some big companies that I will um, talk later. So they have in common that they check all the possible model states. So sometimes it can take a while because uh, if you have many states, it can take hours or days to run a model checking. But ye, I think we can agree that it's much less states, much less possible states than what we have in our implementation, right? Implementation, we have less control about the, the variables than what we have in uh, abstraction. And as we don't have to write a real code, it's cheaper and faster to iterate over your design, over what your understanding of the system. And while you, you write the specification, the formal specification in some way, even if you don't run a model checking, you will have uh, more knowledge, more understanding about the properties of your system, right? And of course, and there's also a, a, a much uh, higher level of correctness that you can achieve with proofs. But proofs are very, very expensive to do. 
you can see in this silly drawing the drawing that I did and and it, there's the possibility the possibility of uh, generate code from the proof but the time that it takes is just oh god one to one hundred I guess it's just terrible but it works too if you are willing to do it and then we have the who use the model checking and companies like Amazon, Microsoft, Intel but you don't have to be big or that big or even mid to benefit from it right? and historically people have been using um, model checking for applications like protocols, uh, new protocols, distributed systems and even for optimization to make uh, aggressive optimization to its application is a very interesting topic and but we you see that we can use it for simple system just to find I don't know a race condition and that lock let's see in the in the demo and but I've talked too much let's go to the demo so first let's go over the fundamentals of receive we are requiring the the library and and the first thing that we see is with proc with proc receives a, a one map contain the options that we want for this process and the options are procs which are which is just a, a set of arbitrary dead fires right it could be anything it could be many what we are defining only one now it has a uh, uh, global variables that are, are used by this process and by this process and here we are define a, a, a global variable my number which has the initial value of zero and all the global variables must be uh, namespace the keywords and the same thing for the local but the difference is that to the global is that is not namespace if you are define a local variable with uh, the initial value of two it cannot be, have a namespace and we are not using so let's delete and the core of the with proc macro where the things happens the things happen is that this uh, label and form pairs right here we have a label it's just identifier abstract identifier it could be anything and we are defined as ink and every uh, label has a uh, its pair is a map which says which uh, variables be local or, or global are being modified step returns a map we should we will modify the global my number and by getting the my number value we use an implicit variable here we are not see it is anywhere but it always exists for each process so we can get the my number value and we are incremented by one and then when we run the process we'll see a timeline in the in the right side of the screen each uh, element in the it is vector is a step right the first one is always the initial state of the variables and we are seeing my number which has the value of zero in this case we are seeing this as a set because the it is an implementation detail that i try to fix and uh, try to see how to handle it but let's abstract this for now we are start my number with zero and this is uh, something new right this is the program county of the P1 process. This is saying that the program counter for the P1 process and is ink right at the initial state. At the next uh, element is the time we are were in time zero. This is time one, time two, time three, time until time eight. In time one, we can see that P PC of P1 have changed, right? And my number has changed too. It was incremented as we 
set in no specification in no code whereas if you don't it's just uh, a flag do the, the the process is finished and there's no anything more that it can done and as we have only one process the rest of the timeline the rest of the steps do not right they remain a constant uh, until the end of the checking this is just an example that Romprox gave to us and later we'll see how to check things and and how to find uh, states right and we also have the timeline diffs which is just a, a, a convenience and let's run this as we can see here it's, just, it's like the run prox it's, just, it's a timeline also but it only shows the difference the initial state and the difference between this step and the previous step, right? As you can see, we've gone from ink here to receive down, which means that's finished, and my number changed from zero to one. And move on, we will, let's comment this, and let's go to the next thing. Uh, we study the interleaving for, uh, for same process types right now we have two process instead of p1 we have p1 and p2 and the same the the rest of the things are equal to the previous example we have global my number local no locals we are increment by one and then let's define it here and let's run the process and as we can see here in the timeline we have p1 pc we have my number and we also have p2 pc right because we define one more process here and what is it doing this uh, the, the the initial state is the first element of this and then we have the the second the time one right where pc2 has changed from ink for to to receive it on which means that it's finished and then p1 pc has not changed so it remained the same and my number was incremented by p2 right and at time two is where we are seeing the change from p1 pc going from ink to to the finish of the process we can see it better using the timeline div right that we have the initial state and then we change my number and then the p2 pc and the other uh, next state uh, the next step we change the p1 pc and we incremented my number from one to two so let's move on to the next uh, example and here is the same thing is almost the same thing as the previous example but we are interleaving between different process types and we can see that ink is like the first first example, right? It's only one process, increment my number, and we are create a new uh, pro uh, process here, right? Call it deck, which only have one identifier, and it's it's like ink, but it's only decrementing and by one amount, the my number variable. So oh, let's define ten. Well, oh, let me define her. Define this. Define that. And when we run this, we see that yes, we see that we have p1, pc, t1, pc, and my number here. T1 comes from the is it the identifier for the deck deck process right? and what we are seeing here is that t1 pc is, is running so it will, is decremented to my number a variable and it's min minus one and then after p1 is incremented it by one it's like the previous example but we are running multiple uh, processes here right with different types of processing and let's go to the next example which are multiple interleaves. It's like a combination of the second example where we had two multiple processes here, right? And but we are combining different types of process increment and, and decrement. The same one if we run this is a, a bigger 
timeline, right? A bigger, have more variables because we have uh, double variables from the previous example. And I guess for this case, I guess it's just easier to run the timeline diff. We are seeing here that initial state and P1, out P1, you start with the ink step, right? And uh, T2, T1 and T2 uh, start in the deck, so then my number with zero state. For time 1, time 2, time 3 and time 4, it did not change, so the map is empty. But for the next uh, step, it changed P1. Increment, so my number is one. T2 was trigger, so uh, it was to zero. Uh, my number was to one here because P2 was uh, action, it was trigger, right? And T1 decrement again, so the final result is zero. And we see here that the example is like the previous one. We have ink, we have P1, P2, and deck, T1, T2. And the things that's new is the checker here, right? Let's um, define this and let's see what this check is about. Here we are asserting that all the my number global are less than three, and we don't have the less than operator yet defined, right? But I am working on it, and let's see. If it finds some violation, it should not find any violation. Oh, oh, of course. We are defined the wrong variable. It's less than three, than three with a interrogation symbol. So if you run again, it will not find anything. I hope. Okay, it's new. New is good in our case because it did not find any violation to to the checker. The checker is passed as the second argument of prox, right? We pass the prox, ink deck, and then the checker, uh, which is just an expression, right? That is understand by our implementation. And let's break this. If we uh, remove the minus two, it should shows, show us an example with minus two between the my number, right? All the... It try to assert this, all the my number uh, values in for each of the steps is only one, minus one, zero, one or two. So, but this is not true for this case, right? So we are sh we are able to check things and then we are able to find things. Here we are trying to find if my number is three. It should return new. Let's just evaluate everything, it's like the preview example, and let's run this. So, mystery is thought it did not found any counter example, right? If we change this and find two, it will find an example for us with two somewhere. Where is two? Oh, it's here, right? So, we see another feature of the library that we can if we put multiple steps over the same process of the same process type we are define an ink deck we should we increment and decrement uh, my number so it will run in, in the order that they appear in for this step so this will be our initial state and then after we run ink we will be ready to run deck, and then after this, we will finish the process, right? So let's define ink deck process, and let's run this. So we can see here that it's running ink first and deck uh, as the second um, step. So the remaining step to do nothing. We can see is the timeline. Right, it's just something that we have, and we will see now local variables. Let's see, we are defining ink, but this ink is modified. Right, we have two processes, and we have the global number. But the new thing here is this amount uh, a variable here that starts with the value of two. This is used um, 
inside the process to first the first step that we will run is the double it will double the amount so we can uh, modify uh, local variables as we can modify global variables but we use this as the um, with a known uh, with no a uh, namespace right and the like the global one the local variables are implicit in the macro so we can use them like variables um, let's see we are double the amount and then we are using in the next step that increment by the value of amount so let's run this it's a huge uh, timeline a bigger timeline because there are a lot of variables so let's focus only on the my number and we can see here that my number was two right uh, was zero in the beginning amount is two but as we double it, it will iterate by four each time, right? And we can see here that it was changed, I guess, for this case, it's easier to see my number. And maybe the amount, we can see the amount by putting this with the identifier, right? As the namespace, mp2 amount. P1 amount is 2, P2 amount is 2 in the beginning, and they double and they increment it, and the final result of my number is 8. So let's see, the next one is multiple initial states. And the difference, the new thing here is this R1 of. It receive, uh, receives a, a, a set, a collection, anything. We have the, this is like the previous example, only this has sent the local amount, right? So instead of only um, checking for the value of 2, we are checking for 0, 1, and 2. So it will um, increase the number of possible states and we will check it for us. So what we want here, we want to find, right? We are create a finder here. We want to find an example where p1 amount uh, is 4, right? Let's run this. So it is 4, and the only possible value that's 4 is when uh, p1 amount start with 2, right? If we try to assert for 5, there is no example because it's not in our range, right? it will find nothing and we can see the timeline div so we are going now to a bigger example it's a simple account system where we want to transfer money from account b to account a and we want do not we want to check if money is lost right we are losing money or not in the oh create money out of thin air so we have a process here we have two processes actually and we have two two accounts flav and biro uh, flav is the sender biro is the receiver and then we have the sender we have uh, local ba local variables right sender new balance and receiver new balance and we have the transfer the money that will be transferred for the process we have four um, steps, adapt, which does not change the state. We have pack, which optimistically uh, sets the account locally, right? And then finally we update the global variables, the global, the account for the sender for the receiver. And here we are checking if the sum of the accounts is 20, right? As if the initial state of each one is, is 10, the, we should not lose money. So you are going to run the timeline div function and we see that there is a counter example. And let's see if it's running, okay. So we have the initial state here, P2, 
The process two is, is transferred two reais and the process one is transferred three reais. So each one adapts, each one sets the op, sets optimistically the new balance. So this is where our problem is, right? One sets the balance to for the receive uh, with twelve reais and another sets as thirteen reais. So we we'll see that in the end, Flavio, right, has eight reais, and Biro has thirty reais, which is wrong. Money was created out of thin air. So let's go to the try to fix that, right? We are going to the account system too. This is the same thing where we change is at least to do where we're gonna change, right? We are gonna take the. This, the two last operator operations, which are sender and sender and receiver new balance. So they are atomic, right? We want to transfer the money in atomic way. So let's go receiver, receiver. So let's check the same check. The account some account account sum is twenty. And let's see if, the, if it found some counter example. So it returns new, right? It was not able to find a counter example. And then we can test, we can uh, have to, uh, we will add another checking, right? We want to see if the current, the the transfers in the end of everything when the both processes are finished they have the this subtraction and the addition correct right the receiver has the money of the of both process and the let me see here let me put sp1 not the one so let's try to find and see if find us a counter example. Yes, it finds a counter example and then the problem here is that where is our problem? The problem is that we are uh, trying to send two reais and three reais, right? So the so Flavio should have five reais less, and Biro should have uh, five reais more in the end, right? But we can see here that Flavio has eight and Biro has twelve. So let's try to fix this. So we need to do something atomic again, right? Let's see what we need to do. We have the same example here and then we need to do the whole operation and atomic. We don't need the local variables, right? We're not using them and we can set them directly. Let's take this and use here in the to do place. Oh, and then we can set sender and receiver. Right, let's try to run this. The correct balance should pass. It passed, so it's all good, and the correct transfer should pass as well. Let's run this over the timeline div. So it passed as well. So we are good. Our system design is working and we can implement it. So it appears certainly that we will not have time to talk about everything that I want to talk. So I will do a very fast overview. Uh, we use Alloy as the backend of, of Recife. It's a very good model, but it's very limited in terms of dynamic modeling. Right, so I, I hope that I can use TLA Plus as a backend is much more powerful. And 
if you if you want to start the model check I, I recommend you to start with Hilo Hilowayne.com is the one where you should start and thank you and bye bye <laughs>